Hello everyone, I'm Dennis from Boulder Sounds. In this video, I'll be showing you the Buffalo Drum version 2 library, which has just been recently updated for contact. And I'd like to show you um, just how easy it is and fun it is to make your own unique loops in this library. Okay, so what I've done is I've loaded up the Buffalo Drum V2 3 against 2 loops. We're looking at the front page, so what we'll do is we'll do the drop down menu, go to the back page, since this is where all the editing fun is. So, what I'd like to do, I want to create uh, a set of loops that have kind of a low tuned kind of sound, kind of loose and flabby sound. So, what I'm going to do is under conditions, instead of per key, I'm going to click on that, it'll change to global. Any edits I make now will be applied to all the loops across the keyboard at all three tempos. So, uh, for example, here's C sharp 2 loop. Very simple. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop that down an octave for the low sound. And here's what we have now. And not only is that down an octave, but every loop on the keyboard. So the global editing is real handy when you want to make a quick change to everything, and it will apply to all three tempos as well. So now I'm going to unhighlight that and go back to per key editing. Uh, so let's start with that C sharp 2 loop. And what I want to do is I'm going to add a two times loop to the one times tempo. So now we're hearing the same loop played at double the speed against the original tempo. Okay, kind of cool. Uh, but what I'll do is uh, I'd like to go back to the one-time tempo, and let's bring that back to zero tuning. We won't drop it down an octave, so only the two times will be tuned down an octave. And I think I'll pan these left and right. So these edit buttons highlight that particular tempo for editing, independently, of course. So now we have this. Right, so we're hearing tempo one at regular pitch, and we're hearing tempo two down an octave. Now I might want to bring up the volume of tempo two just a bit. And here it is with tempo one. Right, so it's very simple editing, but you can get some really cool sounds. Let's go to another key. Let's go to D2. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave tempo 1 down there at minus 12, and I'm going to do the opposite approach. On tempo 2, I'm going to bring that back up to 0. Again, I'm going to pan these left and right. And let's see what we get. Okay, simple idea. Sounds good, though. Let's try something else. Let's go D sharp 2. Next key. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to tune this down quite as far on tempo 1. I'm going to go to minus 6 semitones, if I can get there. And uh, on times 2 tempo, I'm going to bring that back up to no transposition. So D sharp 2 is now this. So tempo 1 by itself. Right. That's tuned down six semitones, and this one is tuned down no semitones. And again, you know, I can pan them left and right if I want to have a better stereo spread there. Okay, let's do something on E2 now. So tempo one is at minus 12. Let's put tempo two uh, not quite so low. So that's just tuned down two semitones. So here's tempo two by itself. And tempo one by itself. And again, I could pan those independently if I want to. 
Okay, let's go to F2 now. Okay, I'm going to tune that not quite so low. I'm going to go minus six on this. Tempo two, let's leave it at minus 12. And let's add a filter now. So I have the edit two times button highlighted. So the edit that I make will be applied only to the two times tempo. Let's turn the filter on. So when I turn on the filter, you see the filter groupings down here. And uh, right now, let's use a uh, let's use a bandpass ladder bandpass four. So now what we'll hear, let's just listen to tempo two only. So this is with the filter engaged, and then I'm going to play around with the cutoff and pick a setting. Here's resonance control. Right, so you can create a very different uh, tonal quality very quickly. And we could assign any of these knobs continuous CC controllers as well and control these in real time. So let's see what that sounds like now with tempo one. Kind of interesting. Okay, let's go to F-sharp 2. So there's my one-time tempo, and I'm going to bring it back up to no transposition. And I'm going to turn my two times tempo on. Let's see what that sounds like. F-sharp. So with the two times tempo, I'm going to drop this way down. Let's go... Minus 18, what does that sound like? Pretty interesting. Um, let's add a distortion effect on it. So I have two times already highlighted as the tempo to be edited. Click on distortion. And here's my distortion settings. I'm gonna turn off high gain. I don't want high gain distortion. Right, and then I can apply my different settings here. Uh, you know, I can have more distortion in the mid-range or uh, in the treble, etc. You have preamp settings, master, and output. Um, so, for example, a little bit more crunch. Turn it down a bit. What does that sound like now with tempo one? Kind of interesting, we can pan them left and right again. Separate them a little bit. Maybe turn the distortion down just a, just a notch. Maybe not. Okay, um, let's move on to G2. I like that. Uh, let's add tempos two to it. And let's not tune it quite so low. Kind of interesting. Uh, let's do one more. G sharp 2. Okay. So that one, let's uh, tune this one down even further. Turn the volume down just a little bit on that one. And on the two times tempo, let's move that up. So here's the two times by itself. And let's add a filter to that one as well. So let's use a, uh, let's try something else. Let's try a uh, legacy filter for pole. Right? Mess with the resonance. Um, 
what are these other send effects? We have three convolutions. If I just click on one of those and I spin this knob, we now have convolutions to choose from just for that one tempo. So we have this drop down menu with different categories. For example, I could choose reverse. Uh, now I've changed it to the reverse category and I have a sound called Tetra, which I particularly like. I could reduce the size of the IR convolution if I wanted, down to 50% for a tighter sound. I could use the high pass filter on the IR convolution to get rid of the, some of the low end. Right, bring up the volume a bit. So there we have it. We have uh, C sharp through G sharp, all independent separate loops. And then what you can start messing around with is see what they sound like going from one to the other. Here's C sharp and F sharp. Here's D sharp and F sharp. Here's D and G. Here's D and G sharp. So you get the idea. There's lots of textures available. And of course, when you put these in your DAW and you do sequencing, you have ultimate control. So um, what I'm going to do next is show you, I will create a sequence. I'll take a little break, do a quick sequence and with these particular loops that I've just created. Okay, now I'm back. So uh, I'm going to show you the sequence that I created. It took me about 20 minutes or so of messing around with these different loops that I created earlier. And I just, you know, laid them in different orders, layered them on top of each other till I got something that I liked. Um, so I've only used the, the loops that I've edited, about seven or eight loops to create this sequence. And I did use uh, a higher loop on the keyboard at three times speed just for a little fill here at the end that sound. Okay, so you'll hear that later in the sequence. So let's give it a listen. So isn't it remarkable that those sounds were created by one drum, by this one drum on the wall behind me. The entire library, we just used that one drum as a sample source. Maybe I'll sample its baby brother there on the left for an update to the library. And you know, I, I neglected showing you all sorts of editing things you can do in this engine that Bo has created. Uh, we didn't use any of the delay, send effects. We could have used the other two convolutions. There's just a lot more you can do with it, but, uh, but it's a blast. Just, it's a lot of fun just to work with and be creative. So uh, thank you for watching the video.